Hello everybody, welcome to Messiah Now. Uh, we're sharing about who the Messiah is now, who the Messiah is when he comes to this earth. This Messiah is none other than the high priest. He is the one that's making intercession right now on behalf of people that are making horrible decisions. He's making intercession right now on behalf of people that are making good decisions but are in harm's way because they're not God decisions. And he's making intercession now for those that have made good decisions, but have been afflicted and gone through terrible things, even in the decisions that they've made that have been the God kind of decision, because there's real suffering that's happening. And it's not always unjust. Sometimes the suffering has to happen to perfect character. So today I wanna to share a little bit about Stephen, and this is a man that stood up and spoke boldly. Uh, this man was actually martyred, uh, one of the very first martyrs that's recorded in scripture. And uh, this man spoke about Moses. And Moses was a man that was known uh, for many signs and wonders. And we're gonna share a little bit out of Deuteronomy today. Uh, we're gonna share out of Acts today. Uh, we're gonna share some things about Messiah now. Uh, we're going to share about this one that was promised to come, and we're going to share about this one that is now. And I want you guys uh, to tune in uh, frequently because we're going to give more and more about Messiah now as we share and unfold some of the mysteries of who this Messiah, who this high priest who this eternal priest is, this one after the order of Melchizedek, uh, the one that uh, was revealed in the days where Abraham had slaughtered the kings, and this one, the priest of the Most High, uh, came with bread and wine, and this one that had a, a king's banquet uh, for this father in the faith, and this one that was a father in the faith recognized uh, the, the appearance of this one as being somebody worthy of giving a seed even of the slaughter of the kings and even of the royalties and spoils of the victory. There were things given to this high priest. And I wanna share about what the high priest is doing right now, what this man of war is doing in his war room in the throne of grace, what this warrior Messiah is peering into and what he's looking out for and what he's coming back as and who he is now. Who is Messiah now? Let's talk about him. We're going to talk a little bit right out of Acts 7, uh, 35 through 37. It says, This Moses whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge, is the one God sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had shown wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren, him you shall hear. And today I'm letting you know that Messiah now is not just a prophet. He's not just the one that came after Moses. This is the eternal priest. This is the one that was before Abraham. This is the one that was before Adam. This is the one that all of creation has come into order from. This is the one that spoke the worlds into existence. And this Messiah now is speaking and decreeing from the throne of God right now, the victory of everything that's already been accomplished. He's declaring the end from the beginning right now. He's decreeing the eternal spirit of the living God that was serving up the very revelation of this one that was before the world ever was, this one is now in that place where he is receiving the very things that you are offering him if you come to him and recognize Messiah now and that you can turn your life towards him even now. If you've been hardened in your heart like Pharaoh was hardened, uh, today you could be softened. The signs and wonders came through Moses. The softening didn't come, uh, but there was a day where it was so horrible uh, from these signs and wonders, these judgment signs and wonders uh, that afflicted the people of Egypt and 
Uh, there was a day where Pharaoh recognized that enough was enough and it was time to release uh, these children that were slaves in uh, Egypt for 430 years. And there was a time where they needed to be released. Uh, there's Mount Horeb that I want to talk about today. Mount Sinai and Horeb, two different uh, names for the same mountain where the commandments uh, were given by the finger of God to Moses. And this is the mountain of Yahweh. And on this mountain, it's spoke of. And there's much that happened on this mountain. And I want to talk a little bit about the Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. I wanna talk about where there's thousands of angels in festal assembly. And I wanna talk about the congregation of the firstborn, the righteous who've been made perfect and to the mediator of the new covenant, whose blood right now is crying out on behalf of those that are ignorant of Messiah now. See, Messiah now isn't a baby in a manger. Messiah now isn't just a broken man on a cross, even though the eternal sacrifice of our Passover lamb is declaring and decreeing Messiah now, we are here to provide you some understanding of Messiah now. Who is this high priest? What is his position? What is his role? Why hasn't he returned? Why is he relenting from returning when there's so much corruption? Why hasn't he come to the nation of Israel? Why hasn't he shown up and slaughtered the enemies that are around Israel? Why hasn't he taken out all those enemies that are causing so much harm? Why is he holding fast his position? Why is he peering in right now and looking upon the earth and scanning it and causing everything that's in it right now to be subject to him? Even the things that the enemy himself, Lucifer, the one that was this archangel, this covering cherub that had access to the heart of God as it's spoken of where he walked amongst the fiery stones. This cherub, this one that had this access, this one that had these privileges, he exalted himself and things shifted as he was removed and one third was removed with him and the angels fell and there was a major revolt in the throne of grace and uh, there was much that took place there. And now we're experiencing everything that transpired there as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world revealed some of what was stored in the heart of the father and maybe Lucifer himself uh, peered in and got a glimpse of what was to be. And he didn't want to see a man made in the image and likeness of their creator, man given uh, more rank, superiority and authority, man that would judge the angels man that would be given the very nature of the living God, not just created by him, not just servants of him, but genuine creation that's come forth from him, begotten sons and daughters. And these begotten sons and daughters are called to rule and reign. They're called with a kingly authority to absolutely decree what heaven is saying and to invoke the very wrath of God on the things that are in the unseen world that are trying to stompede the children of God. We are called not to fight flesh and blood, but we are called to decree the decrees of heaven and destroy the works of darkness. So today I wanna to talk about Messiah now, the one that's in intercession, the high priest of our confession, the one that is making certain that everything that he's begun will be completed. Everything that he started, it will finish and it will finish perfectly. He relents from returning uh, because he desires that none would perish and that all come to repentance. He desires that as the fullness of the Gentiles come in, that there would be a turning even of the Jewish people. And there is a Hebrew calling right now from a Hebrew father that knows the roots and knows the fruits that come from the roots. And he's calling everybody back to their first love. And the love of this mountain of Zion. This is the mount of the living God. This is Yahweh's real mountain. It's not just Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, uh, where Yahweh uh, made himself visible, where he shook and uh, the place was in a place of tremble and fear and that fire came down. 
but this is the Mount Zion where the veil is removed, where no longer are we seen uh, in part, no longer are we seen halfway, but it's genuine sight because it comes from his nature on the inside. It comes from our heart unlocked on the inside. It comes from the eyes of the understanding being enlightened because there's been a circumcision inwardly of the heart of the thing that spoils the ability to be able to have spiritual sight. That thing has to be cut. And right now, as Messiah now is roaring in that place of crying out for mercy upon the nations, crying out for every tribe and nation and tongue to come before him and, and cause him to be enthroned in their praise because they're glorifying the true living one. The Messiah now is, he's relenting, he's holding back, he's holding fast, he's steadfast, he's patient, he's enduring, he's persevering, and he's holding on to this confession of faith. He's holding on to what he saw from the world's begin. And we just declare it now that as Messiah now is in that place of holding his position, not stepping out, not prematurely moving, but only listening, only hearing and obeying and only doing what his father's doing, he will move into position. There will be a shout. He will descend from that throne and the archangel's trumpet will resound and the dead in Christ will rise up and those that never died will get caught up with them in the air. There will be a return, but this Messiah must be revealed for who he is now. This Messiah has hair that's white as wool. He is pure. He is spotless. He has the authority to blot out everything. He has the authority to blot your name out from the book of life. He has the authority to write your name in the book of life. He has the authority to blot out even nations and even those that would not turn. He has the authority to pour wrath upon them because he is the lamb that suffered and is the lamb that bore the wrath and the punishment. Uh, even darkness covered the earth in that three hour period from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. It got so dark when he hung on that tree and there was such a darkness that came because he himself was bearing the wrath of Almighty Yahweh. So today I want you to know that Messiah now is who he says he is. He is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. He is the mediator, your go-between. He is the one making intercession for you. He is the one that will reconcile you back to the Father. It's his cry right now from a place called grace, from a place where he's enthroned in an empowerment for you to come from selfishness, you to come out from amongst all of the perversity and all the perversion and all the world and all the systems of it and come back into that place of knowing your creator, of having relationship, intimate relation. So this man with eyes that are a flame of fire, with hair that's white as wool, with feet are like burnished bronze and a fire. This man, that's an intercessor, that's a mediator, that's a high priest, that's a warrior that will not relent until everything that was purposed before the world was comes into fruition. This one is coming back and he is holding on to the promises. He is holding fast to what it was that he was shown even before he left for the first time and he came into the virgin womb. And this one will come forth and be revealed through his bride as he's forming himself within his church, within his people, within his ecclesia. The temple of the Holy Spirit is none other than the human body, the body that's been surrendered and completely given over to Messiah. Now he is the run of the home. He is the one that's over the house and in the house. He's the one that's revealing what is in his house. For he sees the things that are in your house and he's calling you into his house. Will you surrender today to the Messiah now? The Messiah now is not a storybook. He's not history. He's not something that was. He is something that is and he will come and he will not stop from taking everything that was not of him and rolling it up like a scroll and blowing it away as if it never was. Today, Messiah can be yours. 
You can personally have Messiah. You can personally have a relationship with a living father through Messiah now. The blood that Messiah is seated in, the cry of his heart, the intercession, the, the fight that he's fighting for you as he's crying out on your behalf can be yours as a gift of adoption. You can come into the family of Yahweh. You can begin to know Messiah now. He is Savior, Lord, and King. He is the son of Ben-Yamin. He is the son of Yosef. He is the son of Yahweh. He is the living one. He was the suffering servant, but he no longer is suffering. He sits back in the heavens and laughs and holds everything in derision. He claps the head of everything that tries to trespass and one up and take advantage. Nothing can take him by surprise. He is the only one that can surprise because he has sleeves and he has much that's up his sleeve and he rolled up his sleeves and worked out salvation with his own hand and he is the right hand of authority. He sat down at the right hand of majesty. He stood up for Stephen uh, when he was about to be martyred when the stones are being thrown and he will stand up for you if you will stand up for him. If you acknowledge him before man, he'll acknowledge you before his father in heaven. Messiah now is a roaring lion. He has the nature of a lamb. He yields. He's long suffering. He fights in private. He fights in secret. He holds and he internalizes all of his desire in such a way that his desire is so channeled towards his ones that he has called by name and chosen before the world ever was. And this Messiah now is ready to put out the very robe that you have been crying out for, this robe of righteousness, to take off the stains from being in the pig straw and being in that place of being separated from Father. And he comes to yank off the old garments and put on a brand new garment today. It's called a garment of praise. It's called a robe of righteousness. You're arrayed and decked out before him because he's put himself on you. Will you put him on today? He has a ring for your finger. He has authority. It's to submit to authority, to be under authority to rule and reign as a king and a priest, one that cries on behalf of a father that has sons and daughters that have been away from the family and crying on their behalf as a priest, calling them back into the family with the decree of heaven as a king, royal authority upon the very sons and daughters of the Most High God. Will you come to Messiah now? Will you recognize him when he returns? Or better yet, will he recognize you when he comes? Because he's looking for faith. And if you're a person of faith, put your eyes on him. He's the author and the finisher. He is Messiah now. He is the ruling, reigning king of glory. He sits above the center of the earth and he will return and he will slay everything in the way. He will dismember everything that thinks it can rise up above him. He will cause everything dead and gone to rise up and stand before him. He's the judge of the living and the dead. Will you call Messiah now and ask him to give you his name, to give you his nature, to call you into the family, to call you one of his very own? Do you want to be the Ben Yahweh? Do you want to be a son of the living God? Do you want to know him personally? Come to Messiah now. Come like Mary of Bethany with an alabaster box with the year's wages. Come with everything you've earned, everything that you've ever mustered up through effort and trial and uh, going through life and just experiencing uh, what it's like to have, what it's like to not have, what it's like to have things stored up, what it's like to lose things. Just bring it all to him. Everything you've ever had, everything you've ever lost, everything you've ever desired, everything that you've ever not had, everything that you want to have, give it all and break it at his feet and let him receive, receive everything that you are because you will be received if you turn towards him now, Messiah now. The veil will be removed. But if their minds were blinded, says 2 Corinthians 3, 8, for until this day, the veil remains unlifted if the reading of the Old Testament, in the reading of the Old Testament, 
because the veil is taken away in Messiah. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is removed. When you come to Messiah now, the thing that was blinding you from being able to understand how close, how near, how much this Messiah now wants to be with you where you are, you can absolutely behold him and all of his glory. Not like Moses having to be veiled after, but you can carry the countenance of Messiah now wherever you go. And if people can't handle it, they can bow down and glorify Christ in you. They can bow down and come to Messiah now because you were made to be an image bearer of your maker. And Messiah now is none other than the Lord of all creation, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that spoke everything forth. And Messiah now is calling you by name back to him so that you would know father and you would have the freedom.